Good evening, I'm Ryan Bonazzo. And I'm Catalina Gillies. A major fire in Conmee Township has completely destroyed a home along the Trans-Canada Highway. Fortunately, nobody, nobody was seriously hurt in the blaze. It broke out around 11.30 last night. The single detached wood construction house was located on Highway 1117 at the corner of Lundstrom Road. Conmy Fire Chief Jason Fleck says the lone occupant appears to have been doing some welding on a vehicle at the time of the incident. Volunteer crews spent most of the night at the scene. A vehicle fire spreading to a structure fire and uh, upon uh, initial crew's arrival uh, the structure was already fully engulfed. It was venting through the roof uh, so we uh, mutual aided Oliver Papoonch to come in and assist with uh, water tanker shuttles to our established water supply and uh, we also asked for the OPP to attend scene here and help with traffic control on the highway uh, just for the smoke. Um, it was visible up front here and we had the highway shut down for approximately about an hour until uh, we got a handle on the situation uh, and made it more safe for vehicles passing through. Well, the cause of the fire will likely remain undetermined due to the extensive damage. Minister Greg Rickford was in Thunder Bay today to announce a five-year, $75 million infrastructure investment for the 144 municipalities across northern Ontario. The provincial funding is aimed at sustainable long-term growth for residents and businesses across the north. Alex Flood has the details. Municipal leaders were excited to hear the Northern Ontario Resource Development Support Fund will be providing $15 million a year for five years to help tackle infrastructure projects. The funding per municipality is based on household counts, meaning Thunder Bay will get $400,000 starting next year. Minister Greg Rickford says the North faces a number of unique realities that require extra infrastructure work. There are small um, but important infrastructure projects that municipalities don't always have the capital allocations to deal with. This is going to help with that and upgrade them to, to a standard that, that, that they're comfortable with on, on every level, from an economic development level to a safety level. Municipalities will be able to submit a streamlined project information form and ensure that projects meet the program objectives. And we've worked diligently with your ministry to make sure that that was complementary to how things would work within our municipalities so that it wasn't an onerous process. And we thank you and your government for this added um, funding to our municipalities. Thank you very much. Nord's aims to share the benefits of mining and forestry with municipalities and complement existing funding streams for building infrastructure. Marathon Mayor Rick Dumas was concerned about receiving timely approval on the town's generation mining project, but Rickford quickly laid those worries to rest. Do you fully approve and support these projects of specific generation mining and to Minister uh, uh, Piccini's desk to get the approval as quick as possible? I'm very hopeful uh, that we'll have some exciting news uh, in the not too distant future uh, around that project and only too happy to come up uh, to your community and, uh, and celebrate it at that time. Municipalities are encouraged to submit their projects for funding when the program is made available on December 7th and funding for year one of the program will be distributed to eligible communities by March of 2022. Alex Flood, TBT News. The Thunder Bay District Health Unit is reporting eight new COVID-19 cases today, pushing the active caseload to its highest level since June 12th. Six of the new infections come from the Thunder Bay area. One is in a First Nation community, while the other case comes from elsewhere in the district. Five cases come as a result of close contact. One is related to travel outside of northwestern Ontario, and two exposure sources are still unknown at this time. There are now 38 active cases across the district. The Northwestern Health Unit has one new case today coming from the Sioux Lookout region. The number of active cases has dipped to 15. That's one fewer than yesterday. And we now have the start dates for the vaccine rollout for kids aged 5 to 11 across northwestern Ontario. The Thunder Bay District Health Unit will begin immunizing kids on Friday and the Northwestern Health Unit will follow a day later on Saturday. Meanwhile, the Catholic School Board announced yesterday evening that there's a positive case associated with the St. Anne Elementary School. According to the health unit, that person hasn't been inside the building for an extended period of time. 
Nonetheless, close contacts have been dismissed. The positive case also impacts one bus cohort. Ontario officials are meeting with the federal government today to hammer out a child care deal that would cut fees to an average of $10 per day. So far, nine provinces and territories have already signed on. Colin DeMello has more. As the Ford and Trudeau government sit down to hash out a child care agreement, Ottawa says it's missing a key element from Ontario. The province didn't share its calculations to lower daycare fees to $10 a day ahead of today's meeting, leading to fresh criticism over the province's negotiating tactics. The government still hasn't handed in their detailed proposal, and they still haven't given their action plan that the feds need to finalize the deal. When is the Premier going to stop trying to run out the clock, try to stop doing the bare minimum, and finally get this deal done? The two sides have been in daycare discussions for months. The government has only offered up a glimpse into the talks. The federal government put an initial offer on the table. Uh, we explained to them that it did not get us to the $10 a day child care. That was the goal of the program. The federal government didn't come to us and say, well, it's a take it or leave it offer. They came back and said, let us know what the differences are in the province of Ontario and how we get to that $10 a day. The two sides are billions of dollars apart. The federal government is offering $10 billion over five years. They've got to do much more. So we're sitting with them today to make that case to ensure we deliver $10 a day daycare that is truly affordable for all families. The province, though, refuses to say how much more. Not publicly, not privately, not even to the federal government. And some are questioning why. The government wants more money for a longer period than other provinces. That's why it's making the deal so hard to negotiate. Why is it taking so long for the government to provide a plan and negotiate a deal on child care? The Minister of Education is indicating the Ford government wants an agreement but isn't willing to rush it. The Premier is committed to getting a fair deal, take the time, work with the feds, and lend the best possible deal for the people of this province. Leaving families wondering whether their child care costs will be cut down in January. Colin DeMello, CTV News. The transition is underway in Dryden as the municipal police force is soon to be replaced by the Ontario Provincial Police. The city's police chief has departed and an interim chief has been chosen from within the OPP ranks. Acting Inspector Ed Schwastik, seen here in the middle, is taking on the mantle of police chief following the resignation of Doug Paulson, seen on the right. Paulson has taken a chief of police position in Manitoba. Schwastik was the detachment commander in Dryden and has served with the OPP for 27 years. Dryden Council voted in favor of disbanding the DPS in July and on October 28th, the Ontario Civilian Police Commission gave the city the green light to terminate the employment of 35 staffers as the local service is abolished. Schwastik's appointment comes into effect this weekend and will last until February 24th, which is when the OPP will officially take over. Four people from southern Ontario have been arrested in connection with a break and enter at a Northside apartment yesterday morning. Police responded to the 200 block of Ravenwood Avenue shortly after 10 a.m. Officers seized a handgun as well as suspected crack cocaine, fentanyl, cash and drug trafficking paraphernalia. All four face tra trafficking charges and are accused of being unlawfully in a dwelling. One of those arrested also faces several weapons-related offenses. All of the accused have been remanded into custody. A pair of new gas stations in the Thunder Bay area have created some neighborhood gas wars. Fuel prices have dropped along City Road with the recent expansion of the Mountain View gas bar. And the new gas station next to County Fair Mall is bringing down prices along Dawson Road. Mitchell Ringos reports. The first Simply Gas location in Northern Ontario, operated by Greenery Retail Canada, opened recently at the west end of County Fair Mall, adjacent to East Avenue, and it definitely caught area drivers' attention with a gas price of $1.36.9 per litre. That's around 18 cents cheaper than the other gas stations on Thunder Bay's north side. With prices far below competition, Simply Gas seems to have created a price war with a nearby station along Dawson Road. The Petro Canada has dropped their prices below $1.40 to rival the new gas bar around the corner. 
The owner of Simply Gas was unable to speak on camera, apparently due to competition laws. But we spoke to some of their customers about what they thought of the new lower prices. I think it's amazing. I mean, the prices have been too high for too long. And, uh, you know, especially since where we are and how close we are to other places that are so low, right? So I think it's awesome. I think it's it's great. And I'll definitely make the trek over here to, to get this gas. I think I've just been more conscious about where my dollar is going, I guess. And uh, prices prices are going up for most things these days. So it does make a difference. And it at least helps other people save, like, especially with everything else going up, like, groceries are going up, like, it, honestly, if, if they can knock it down to what the price is now, it would be a big help for a lot of people. And a similar story has been taking place on the Fort William First Nation, as a few gas stations have joined a price war as well, due to the recent reopening of Mountain View with their expanded number of pumps and lower prices. The k a gas station next door quickly lowered their prices below Mountain Views, which is currently at $1.23, while k a is at $1.21, the eighth lowest gas price in all of Ontario right now. Mountain View owner Chris Danielson is totally okay continuing to drop the price. I like keeping it low. It's better for, better for everyone, better for us and the customers. More people out here come in and... You know, we're not trying to hog the ball. That's why you always see us lower or K&A lower. So it's, it's fun going back and forth, but it's, it's not really a big issue. There's no word on when these gas wars will end, so better fill up now while the prices are most affordable. Mitchell Ringo's TBT News. A portion of Red River Road was closed all day due to an apparent water main leak discovered earlier this month. The city issued a media release this morning saying the busy street had been closed to traffic in both directions between Rockwood Avenue and Hodge Street due to a required water main service repair. Drivers were asked to use residential streets in the area as detours. The city had the leak fixed late this afternoon and Red River Road has now fully reopened. After 18 long months, the young actors at Paramount Theatre will finally be able to hit the stage again. The new play, Heather's the Musical, will kick off at the Paramount Live season tomorrow night. <laughs> Heather's is best explained as an 80s version of Mean Girls. Protagonist Vic Veronica Sawyer makes her way into the most ruthless clique in her high school while dealing with love, drama, and all the regular pressures of high school all at once. Lead actress Jessica Smith has been with Paramount for almost 10 years and says that she and her castmates are overjoyed to be back on stage. It's truly amazing. I mean, as I said, this is like an escape from reality. So the fact that we had to break for such a long time, it obviously hurt. But now that we're back, I think it just helps us to appreciate it more and to know that we really just can't take things for granted and that stuff like this is so, so special. To have them back here um, where this is their safe place, right? Theater is their safe place. They come here, they get to do, uh, be what they want, be themselves. Uh, and to see them performing again is, is the most heartwarming feeling ever. Heathers runs three nights in a row, tomorrow through Saturday at 7 p.m. You can grab tickets at the door or on eventbrite.ca.